Hello, everyone. Welcome to this latest episode of Jim and Job. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome, everyone, to this next episode of Jim and Java. I'm always excited to be here to answer your fundraising questions for your nonprofit organization. If you need to reach me, you can always do so at Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you'd like to reach me via email, you can do so at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com or you can always just leave a comment or a question below down in the comment section. We really survive and thrive based on your questions and we strive to answer every single question that we have no matter what. And so we'll put that out there today, and I hope you will um, dive right in and help us with uh, by asking some, some some questions. Don't be afraid to uh, to put uh, your questions out there. There's no dumb, wrong, or bad question out there. Uh, be sure also too, if you enjoy what you hear today, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We always appreciate that community of friends and uh, individuals all striving together to. Uh, accomplish that goal of reaching new heights in your levels of income and become fully funded. Let's dive right into our first set of questions. Our first question today is from Adam in St. Augustine, Florida. And Adam asks, what ingredients are in a good appeal at a dinner? Well, thanks, Adam. I appreciate that question. That's always so important. Uh, I can't tell you how many dinners I've gone to and been part of over the years where it, it seems like the appeal is either watered down or there really isn't even an appeal at all. It seems like all there is is, is perhaps uh, just putting something out there. We could use your support. We need your help and, and leaving it there. And frankly, that doesn't do a lot to help further your cause or help really provide instruction or clarity for our partners or our potential partners that are out there in, our, in the audience. Believe it or not, uh, we, we may assume that our partners really know, uh, whether they've been to a dinner before or not, uh, that they know how to give and what they want to give uh, when they get there. And that really is not the case. Um, the yes, I've definitely seen my fair share of dinners where someone comes with a check already made out and they have in their mind what they want to give. My goal when I see those kinds of things is to try and take the person to the next level. What can we do, what can I do to get them to maybe look for a second check to say, you know, I didn't write that first check big enough. I, wanna, I need to write a second check. Uh, and um, that always is a goal that I want to strive when I see people coming with their checks made in advance. Um, that also says that, uh, that perhaps they weren't leaving uh, the opportunity out there for the Holy Spirit to work uh, in this situation. But many times people don't realize that, uh, that, that it takes uh, the Holy Spirit and moving that evening out of the equation. Um, sometimes they might know, each, know themselves well enough that they feel like they, um, they don't trust themselves that they may make an emotional decision that night. And certainly I get that as well too. But talking about the best ingredients, number one, uh, and I've said this so many times on our channel, it's so important that you, that you restate the problem to individuals. I never believe that you can say enough about what your problem is and why your organization exists. Don't just assume that everybody knows or it's wrong to remind people what the problem is. What do we all, why are we here tonight? Why are we striving? Why does this organization exist at all? What's the problem that caused us to have to to form this organization, the problem exists, whether it be homelessness, human trafficking, poverty, uh, clean water, whatever your cause is, um, make sure that you make a case for that. And then provide the solution. What is a solution? What things do you believe have to happen for change to actually occur? And hopefully that, uh, that, that solution is your organization and the activities and the plans and strategies that you're doing. Um, you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have started the organization if you generally didn't have plans, ideas, or strategy to help solve a problem or combat the problem that exists. So outline what's your plans, what are your strategies for making a difference, for solving the problem that exists. And 
then focus in on what I refer to as, uh, as accelerators. What are those elements that need to be done and need to be funded to move your organization to the next level? And I wouldn't give people too many accelerators. Uh, I've found that three to four accelerators work best. And so having, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, just is too many. It confuses people. Uh, give them three or four items that if we did this, it would take our organization to the next level and make them very clear and very specific. If your organization is uh, focused in on camps for kids, you know, how many camps did we have in 2020? How many camps do we want to have in 2021? How many camps do we want to have in 2022? How many kids do we want a scholarship? We had this many in 20, this many in 21, this many in 22. How do we get there? And then of course, if you've got those specific goals, what's it going to cost? How much does an individual scholarship cost? And then provide the opportunity. Do you want to fund one, two, three, ten scholarships? If a scholarship costs $500 to scholarship a, 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 a child to camp for a week, would you be willing to help to underwrite 10 scholarships at a cost of $5,000? Give people something very specific. I can't tell you how often the dinners that I've coached and helped uh, I have donors, partners come up to me afterwards and say, I've attended these dinners for years and never heard clarity from them. And what I appreciate so much about your ask or your way of doing a dinner is that I now had clarity. I knew exactly what the organization was trying to do, what they were trying to accomplish, and how I could help, the role that I could play, what my gift was doing, and how it could make a difference. And that also means that we're including outcomes in there. What's the outcome? What's going to happen? Is it just about sending a, a, a child to camp? Or is it about sending them to a camp that's going to help them? Are they kids with disabilities? Is it going to help them uh, to uh, have a, a happier, healthier summer, to enjoy their summer? Is it going to help them with self-improvement? What is it going to be? What's going to happen? What's the outcome? Uh, are we going to train them in some way so that when they get back to, to school, uh, they look at life differently um, or their community, their neighborhood? What's the outcome that's going to happen? That's so important. I mean, everybody wants to see results. Um, many people in the audience are, are probably individuals who have a portfolio of financial um, uh, products that, that they have purchased. And, and of course, you know, you buy a mutual fund or buy a stock. You want to see return on investment. What's, uh, how's that going to grow? What's the potential for growth? Exactly the same happens uh, and the same thinking when, when they're supporting an, a nonprofit organization or a cause. They want to see a return on investment. They want to see that something good is going to come from their gift. And so make sure that you are very specific. And I can't say enough about the, uh, the importance of doing what I refer to as a split appeal. That's doing, uh, presenting the cause, the solution, the programs, and, and the opportunities exist early on in the program not having them fill out the envelope then, but presenting those early so that people, especially the logical givers, can process through that so that at the end they've thought through it if for faith-based organizations that they prayed about it, they can really see um, that that they've they've been able to process through that. You know, I feel like it's so many dinners I go to that the organization feels like they need to slowly sneak up on someone and ask them for money because if they prepare them, they're going to walk out the door early, and that couldn't be anything further from the truth. Uh, preparing people, get them in the right frame of mind, right mood to be ready for that ask at the end of the night, and give them enough time, give them sufficient time. Don't feel like, and especially if you're behind in your program, um, you might be five or ten minutes behind or even 20 minutes behind in your program. Don't cut, don't skimp on giving people proper time. I don't agree at all and I don't like to be late on programs. That's why I think it's so important to stay on schedule. Uh, but that is not the time to rush things through and to cut people off um, when um, when, when they're at a, at a very vulnerable time. So, Adam, I hope that helped. And those are the ingredients that I would say go into a good appeal. So hopefully that helps. All right, well, let's look at our second set of questions. This, the second question is from Jimmy in Philadelphia. And Jimmy asks, what things do you see in fundraising that frustrate you? 
Well, Jimmy, I'll, I'll tell you, the things that frustrate me more than anything this day and age is that we really take for granted relationships and relationship building. There's nothing more important in, in development and fundraising and working with nonprofit organizations than building relationships with our partners. Um, unfortunately, I see too many leaders of nonprofit organizations focusing in on the bottom line. They see a, an individual who's a current donor or a potential donor, and they look at them and all they see is a dollar sign. And they, they tend to, uh, they maybe have heard me or others like me say relationships are important. So they build a relationship so that it can get money from people or they don't even care about the relationship. Um, they, they just focus in on how can I get the dollar, uh, that big, easy, fast, how can I get that quickly, that, that gift? And uh, it, that's just, that just frustrates me. Um, you know, there's, there's been a, a, uh, a term that's used, which is uh, transactional uh, relationships. And a transactional relationship, um, I, I've explained it in the past, is very much like an ATM. An ATM is not important until you need money. When you need money from that ATM, uh, that's an important thing to you. And you want to find that and you, you, uh, you look everywhere till you find that ATM. And then when you finally find the ATM, uh, you use it. And then you don't care about an ATM again until you need money again. And unfortunately, that's exactly the way some organizational leaders treat their donors or prospective donors. They treat them as ATMs. They're important when they need money, and they're not important when the organization doesn't need money. And unfortunately, those donors, those partners, see those things. Uh, they can read that in many cases a mile away. I just believe it's so important to, to start genuine relationships with people. And what that means is that you've got to understand that some of these people have a heart, a desire, uh, and, and have a passion for your cause as much as you do, sometimes even more. If, if I run a, um, a cancer, a heart fund, and my mom or my uncle or grandfather, someone I love or care about, died of cancer or died of heart disease, um, that's important to me. That I'm passionate about that. And I believe that an organizational leader needs to really listen and look for that heart, look for that passion. And if someone's interested in that particular cause, help them get involved in that. If you're in a faith-based organization and you believe that someone has been called to be involved in something, help them with that. I can't tell you how often I've talked to people and in conversations I've found that they have a heart or a passion for something that is not related to my organization. And I, I immediately say to myself, I want to care enough about this person to help them fulfill that passion that they have. I want to find them an organization that's going to do it. If our organization doesn't do that, won't help them with that, and we have a large organization with a lot of opportunities, I'm going to find that person an organization that will help them fulfill that heart and passion. And I'll tell you, in the, in the times that I've done that, uh, it's come back to reward me many times. I, I always think about the movie, uh, the Christmas movie, Miracle on 34th Street, when Santa um, was, was sending people uh, to, uh, he worked for Macy's and was sending people to Bloomingdale's because they had better deals or had the product that somebody wanted uh, at a competitor. And that just, in a way that was so unheard of, and, and the people who came in to see Santa were shocked that they were sending them to another store. Well, in a way, I sort of feel that way myself, in that I've, it's sometimes a shock people or surprise people that says, well, our organization can't do that, but th I believe this organization can. And so often, those donors come back to me and say, Jim, thank you for caring about me personally, uh, not just me as a donor. Um, and, and I've helped that organization that you sent me to. But now I'm back, I want to help your organization as well, because if, if your organization is like you and they care about me, I want to be involved in that somehow. And uh, it's too often that's come back to, uh, to, to help me and, and to be good. So anyway, I hope that helps uh, answer your question. That, Jimmy, that's where the frustration lies with me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that ends our next broadcast. Thank you so much 
for being a part of this episode. Once again, if you need to reach me, do so at uh, on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Reach out to me on email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, uh, we're hoping to help you take your income to the next level and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.